The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And you're live. Okay, good day and greetings to everyone. Thank you so much for attending this first inaugural New Mavericks uh, webinar, uh, a webinar that we're going to deliver on a topic about how to gain full team dedication through New Maverick influence. My name is Ramon Newman. I'm one of the founders of New Mavericks, and I have on the line with me uh, a great bunch of New Maverick leaders, game-changing leaders in their own right in different areas that are also going to contribute their insights and input to this very important topic for leadership. And you know, I'm, I'm really actually quite excited about unfolding what we believe is uh, a new frontier in game-changing leadership. We're calling it New Maverick Leadership, which basically means you know we don't hold back too much in sharing insights and truth that really need to be known out there in the marketplace and uh, for leaders. And we're planting really a new powerful seed of leadership wisdom that you know how to achieve in a better way because leadership's not perfect yet, but we are definitely evolving there. So a lot of the inspiration for kind of inspiring this new maverick leadership has stemmed from my business partners and I working with and observing a lot of top leaders over the last 15 years. And we just felt it was time to really give another jolt of insight about leadership to evolve beyond just one-sided, one-dimensional dimensional lead, genius leaders to, you know, who are really good in one area but cause problems in other areas of their life and others' lives. That really to take good and great leaders and really evolve them into fully integrated, balanced, new maverick leaders whose desires and actions uh, most evolutionary for themselves and, and the world in general. So New Maverick Leadership is really for those who want to be more highly integrated, want to feel healthier, more vital, more energized, more creative, and also have a more zen-like focus and mindfulness as, as well as warm-heartedness uh, in achieving in a more profound, integrated way. So there's two fundamental things that you know we really want to get across behind New Maverick Leadership and that how you achieve is actually more important than what you achieve because how you achieve is going to determine sustainable success and fulfillment. Whereas, whereas we can have you know, short-term success and it can go away and then what's the point? So how you achieve is really uniquely based on who you are, what your innate ability is, what you're good at, and what your higher purpose is. And it's kind of like the fable of the, the tortoise and the rabbit. I mean, we've worked with business leaders, we've started working with them where they've just lost millions of dollars, and they've also lost sight of who they are and who they're meant to become. And we've worked with business leaders who have structured their businesses in such a way that it wasn't innately geared to what they're actually good at. Uh, or business leaders who are very successful uh, but couldn't figure out their higher purpose to support their next level of success. So. We, we have the analogy that basically gold cannot become silver and silver cannot become gold. That's pretty much a given. You can only really polish those two things. So new, new Maverick Leadership is really about knowing your unique identity and how to polish it so that you shine with the greatest degree of clarity and creativity in what you do. And this is really achieved by unfolding and enlivening that full range of intelligence. You know, I'm, I always get really excited about a movie that comes out that talks about unfolding human potential and you may have may not seen the movie Limitless and Lucy where the lead characters basically get access to their full brain potential to command what they want to see happen. So imagine if you could actually practically unfold more of that potential every day. And it was just interesting today we were speaking to a, a manager, a new client in a company that we work with, it's a billion dollar company, multi-billion dollar company, and she was actually very upset and peeved off that she wasn't aware of this development program that we were working on with the leaders that it wasn't made available to her earlier. So it just made me realize that in any organization, people are actually hungry for development. So we want to make sure that development is integrated. That's a real key principle of New Maverick Leadership is putting it all together, integrating the full range of intelligence. And it's just like Malcolm Gladwell clearly discovered from his book Outliers that it's not just enough to have a good IQ. And then Daniel Goldman comes out with EQ, and now there's body intelligence, and there's all these different types of intelligences which are, are fantastic and need to come out. But let's cut to the chase and get to that value that underlines all these different intelligence so we don't get lost in that whole field of intelligence because there's a lot of information coming out these days that just absorbs us. 
So we don't want to lose sight of those, those deeper values that connects us all. So it's about really unifying and integrating all these partial intelligences into the total field of intelligence, and I'm going to call this CQ, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what that is in a minute. So we want new Maverick leaders to really be the gold standard of fully developed, integrated leaders, and that we believe no one person has all the answers, yet as a community of conscious, cooperative new Maverick leaders, we're more likely to find the most integrated, proven answers that really serve everyone's journey to fulfillment as a leader. So quite simply, our mission is just to find, develop, promote, support the best knowledges and practices and programs for creating integrated leaders, new maverick leaders who have more command of what they want to see happen in that most evolution direction in all areas of their life. So my role here on this webinar is just to give the wholeness of how to develop a fully dedicated team and the other distinguished speakers here will really elaborate on that wholeness from the domain of expertise. So let's get down to the topic. So how to gain full team dedication through and new map. I'm going to interrupt you there, Ramon, because I know um, you're going to be uh, uh, kind of telling everybody about all of us, and there's no one to really introduce you. So I'm just going to cut in here and give you a little introduction, if that's okay. If, if you have to, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> because Ramon not only has been a friend for a number of years, but he's the CEO of Ram Global Consulting, and for the past 15 years, as he's mentioned, he's been an executive development advisor working with top CEOs and executives in New, Ze New Zealand, Australia, U.S., Europe, with some really top multi-million and multi-billion dollar companies. But what I think, and that's on the outside, but on the inside, he has this drive that I think you can see in the way he speaks. He was a world-class middle distance runner. But the thing that I think I find most interesting about him that I think people should know, it, when, in his 20s, when he was 25, he made the choice to live as a monk in the last monastic life for 10 years. So when he talks about this deeper level of intelligence, this field of consciousness, he's not talking in some kind of like a dilettante, like a dabbler way. He's had really deep experience of that deep field of silence. And he really knows that that's the source for where, where things come from. And I think with that, um, I'm going to let Ramon take it back over. A man of deep silence and lots of dynamism. Take it away, Ramon. Thanks uh, very much, Michael. And I'll tell you my lesson of I had those two extremes, and I'll just try to integrate it for you as, as we go through this. So how to gain full team dedication through New Maverick Influence. And when I say team, this includes your customers, your clients, your investors, your suppliers, and your JV partners, because at the end of the day, we're all about supporting each other's vision. And even our top client actually says, we don't see you guys as separate from the company. We see you as partners in our company and in our vision. So I'm going to share two points for this. One is how you and the culture that you create determines dedication and how to get really super clear on your unique big vision that really inspires dedication. And I'm going to give one real world example of this. So number one, how you and the culture you create determines dedication. And this saying here, as is the leader, so are those they lead. Obviously, no one really wants to be dedicated to anyone who doesn't have a compelling vision for themselves and the world, and that's also significant to them, nor does anyone really want to be dedicated to a leader who doesn't create the culture and the environment that allows people to perform at their best and at the same time be more integrated. So what is it that creates leaders who can really fully create that dedicated culture and environment? So like everything, it begins within. It's by having that full dedication to developing your full integration and development so that you can have greater clarity, greater energy and creativity to lead and sustain progress. I mean, if you aren't dedicated to your development, why would others be inspired to be dedicated to you? And ultimately, people are buying you first. They're buying your consciousness, they're buying your energy and they're buying your bliss before they're even interested in hearing what you have to offer. So this is the real basis for naturally inspiring full team dedication, as people generally want to work with people who are more developed than they are or are involving in better ways than they are. So that's number one. Number two, getting super clear on your unique vision, which really inspires dedication. Now this really fundamentally comes down to developing world-class brain functioning. And what I mean by that is that they've done studies on world-class athletes, business leaders, 
and musicians, and they found that they have large amounts of integration between all hemispheres in their brain, back and front, left and right, that allows them to see bigger pictures as well as the details uh, within those big pictures. So it actually amazes me, this is my side note peeve here, that modern education has really grossly overlooked natural proven ways to develop full brain potential. And it's going to be more and more important these days as the pace of life speeds up and all this information that we have to deal with. Human development has to keep up and it has to keep up on the level of brain development. So how is graded brain development achieved and how does it contribute to developing full team dedication? It comes down to really increasing this most fundamental field of intelligence, which is our consciousness. I'm calling it CQ. And what that basically is, is our conscious capacity to increase our power of attention and bandwidth. And I require you right now to have that attention and bandwidth and conscious capacity just to fathom these rest of these points I'm going to share with you. And I know that's not a problem for anyone here because obviously just to be on this webinar you've got good consciousness. So thanks very much for attending again. So leaders, they are influenced in their ability to lead by the quality of their awareness, their consciousness and those of the consciousness around them. And we often see this in politics. A leader comes in with great ideas and great intentions. As soon as they get into power, they're completely squashed, those good ideas by that uh, collective consciousness around them. So consciousness is that home of all intelligence. We're all intimately connected to it. It's the most powerful, pure source and force of nature. It's that switchboard from where all thoughts and clarity and creativity reside. And without it, we simply wouldn't be conscious of one another or even have thoughts from which to act on. Now, the first ever movie I ever saw was Star Wars at the age of seven, and I was completely enamored by it, especially that value of the Force. And yet, 10 years later, I was really peeved off that no one actually told me what the Force was and how to connect to it. And it's only when I started meditating and I became a full-time meditating monk that I started to figure out what the force was, and that's that field of consciousness that connects everything. So why does greater consciousness give you a clearer vision, a super clear vision? Well, by connecting to this most deepest, silent, non-changing aspect of yourself, it gives you a high degree of clarity to actually see, not visualize, not visualize, which is in some way a manipulation, but actually see your unique vision within yourself, as well as giving you all that creativity and energy and organizing power to fulfill it. So literally the power of your team's knowledge and action is determined by the power of their consciousness or the power of their attention. So you can give like 10 people, 10 different, uh, oh, it's one, ingredient, one set of ingredients and a recipe and literally they'll make 10 different tasting cakes, qualities of cake out of it. It just depends on that attention that they have. And so the more consciousness you have, you're more able to slip into these super fluid states of functioning. I had this experience when I was trying to qualify for the World Junior Championships and I ha had these occasions where I was maxed out physically and mentally in a race and yet somehow I was able to let go and tap into a deeper field that allowed me to perform at another level and get the result I wanted. And I just want to share a really lucid experience of this from Jonah Lomu who was a world class um, rugby player back in the 90s. He said, when I play at my peak, I get into a different zone. I, I become a completely different person. I can't really explain it. I'm so focused on what I have to do. You could be talking to me, but you'd have to slap me to, to get my attention. It's almost like you're running, but you're watching yourself while you're running. It's like an out-of-body experience. So when you get that sort of clarity in your mind, and your mind is at peace, and your soul is at peace with your body, it all comes into sync and it's a quite different experience. So what is it to have more consciousness and what does it do for you and your team? Well, basically it enables you to feel more, see more, know more, to make more powerful, inspirational, evolutionary actions that obviously inspires people to want to associate, align, and dedicate themselves to that vision. And with greater consciousness, it gives this quality of knowingness. It's, you can call it intuition, whatever you like. There's a knowingness to how to command progress in the best way possible. And the best way possible is always the path of least action and resistance. I know I've had experiences when I've done a lot of work, I need to realize, oh, if I need to just did this and this, that would have been such a simpler, less resistance way to do it. So that's what's happened. When you're in that flow of full of consciousness, 
we can find that path of least resistance to progress. And this is very important to having dedication because people are dedicated when they feel that they're progressing. You know, when they're not progressing, life doesn't really feel like it's worth it. And depression can sit in because we're not progressing and feeling more integrated and fulfilled. So depression is actually the opposite to the nature of life, which is the expansion of happiness which really comes through integrated progress. So how do we have more power of consciousness? Well, it really comes down to having a more settled yet alert mind and heart. And when we connect with that ocean of consciousness, then we find we have more stream of consciousness flowing through us in whatever we do. And it's actually been found that high performers have about five times less thoughts than the average person because they have more settled, integrated minds and hearts. And this settled, settled, alert mind and heart is developed by really letting go, going beyond and transcending the partial intelligences and boundaries of our body, our senses, our mind, our intellect and our ego to that really limitless, unbounded, non-changing source, which is consciousness, that intelligence there. And the analogy here is that like of a, a lifeguard trying to save a drowning person, the lifeguard can't actually save the drowning person until they relax and calm down and settle down. And, and like that with the mind, when the mind settles down, you're more able to help yourself, others are more able to help you. And that situation, that circumstance, like in this water, is not a threat to you, it, it becomes an ally to you. So the only real problem we really have if we break it down the world is not having enough consciousness to have a settled mind and heart. When we have that, when we don't have that, everything seems like a problem. When we have that, then nothing really seems like a problem. So consciousness creates more dedication. And it's by investing in yourself on this level and the people around you investing on this and integrating this higher awareness and higher consciousness, then it naturally makes you and them feel more settled and happy and they're more, therefore more dedicated to your vision. Plus, you and they have more greater conscious capacity and energy to take on more responsibility. And this also weeds out those that are not really dedicated to you and your team's vision and happiness and progress. And a great example here is the German football team that won the World Cup this year. That team was literally operating from a more deeper connected level and a greater wholeness than all the other teams. They just had more connectedness, more unity, more simplicity, more trust that was and it really enabled them to work together as a dedicated team. Now the real world business example is our top client who's actually a, leads a six billion dollar revenue company. We've worked with him for the last four years he, and also about ten of his executives and managers. He was awarded CEO of the year in his country the first year we worked with him and he, he got that for mergers and acquisitions and, and basically leading a company for 25 years with continuous growth of revenues. So he often gets asked how are we going to do this? There's so many variables to make this transaction work. And simply, the stock reply is, I don't know, but we will. So he's just coming from this limitless awareness and consciousness, having an inner knowing to be able to trust himself, that he has the capacity to handle all the variables. And he describes it as voluntary cooperation. <laughs> he terms a dedicated team is, is through voluntary cooperation. So one of his quotes when he was doing the biggest deal he did last year, he said, two of our team and I are organizing uh, the biggest deal in our corporate history and it involves long hours, tight time frames, many multiple no-go hurdles and many opportunities for stress. And he said, despite all this, I feel like I'm the eye of the storm. So that pretty much hopefully gives you some insight from my perspective of developing a fully dedicated team. There is another component I'd love to share about called deserving power, but we'll use that on another webinar. So if you want to start developing this type of experience for yourself and your team, just go to newmavericks.com, download the New Maverick Leadership Blueprint. Uh, under the leadership menu and just take a look at that and even contact us and start working with us and developing this sort of in the zone thinking. So in summary, getting to full dedicated team really requires an integrated leader that has a clear big vision that radiates through an expanded consciousness that both your team and yourself have. So I'm now going to pass the baton here to my very good friend, Mr. Mr. Mark Dunn, he's quite a character. I don't know how he got on this webinar, but he did. <laughs> and uh, 
Mark Gunn is, is an uh, amazing gentleman. He was a professional AFL football player. If you've ever watched Australian rules football, it's the most amazing game ever. Uh, these guys are some of the most fittest guys around. And Mark was fortunate enough to play that as a professional. He then evolved that into uh, becoming a health speaker. And he's written a book, a fantastic book called Ancient Wisdom for Modern Health. And he's now going to share with you how to really avert chronic illness and have that health that you require to really drive your big vision in a sustainable way that inspires dedication all around you. So take it away, Mark. Thank you, Ramon. And it is a great pleasure to be here. And all congratulations to you for bringing such a great uh, team of uh, experts, by myself, of course, uh, to, uh, to speak. I think it's a great initiative. And uh, I must say that it's a, a thrill to be first cab off the rank, because over the last decade or so of traveling around corporate Australia and um, more recent times America and various countries, uh, when training budgets and leadership development budgets get cut, the first thing that seemed to have got cut was the health and well-being training. And uh, so I think it's, it's really important and what I've observed around this whole area of performance and leadership development and especially in terms of new maverick thinking is that our health is now being seen as the foundation of every other aspect of personal and leadership development and I think this is a really interesting theme and why I, I touch on it at the beginning because traditionally we've always seen health and well-being as sort of this sort of soft training budget. You know, you do that at the end when the marketing and the productivity and the time management have all been put in place but I um, always have a, a theory that you can have the best strategies in the world around marketing and motivation and team development. But unless you have good energy, you're on top of stress, and you have crystal clear mental clarity, then most of those strategies are out the door by 10 o'clock in the morning. And so this is where we, we really start, and it's a great honor to hopefully go through some things where people can really ramp up three things. One, their energy levels, um, their ability to be resilient and stay on top of stress, and this idea of mental clarity. And everything you've touched on in the introduction has really been around this idea of having crystal clear clarity so we know exactly what decisions need to be made at the right time, how we can allocate our priorities, how we can work with others, all depend on that that mental clarity and focus. So um, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, again, just to quickly put things in perspective, but you've done a really great job of introducing this idea of, of consciousness, um, which is really, the, in my belief, the foundation of our health and well-being. You know, we often think of health and people think of, you know, I've got to go and exercise, I've got to eat well, I've got to get sleep. Um, but from my perspective, you know, I've done a lot of um, research on the Eastern traditions of healthcare as well as the latest Western science. And it's this idea of, of transcending, developing that inner consciousness, which is the foundation of, of health. Because one of the biggest problems people have in terms of their health in choosing the right foods or getting the right exercise or knowing what they need is just having the clarity around those choices. And when we're stressed or when we're emotional, when business is getting on top of us, we don't make the right decisions about food and sleep and exercise. So um, we often promote, and I've done it myself, and I know you have, uh, this practice of transcendental meditation, which is just a very simple, easy technique. And many of the top business leaders throughout the world are now coming out and seeing how it is the basis of their success long term. One of my favorites is Ray Dalio, the king of the, the hedge funds in the US. And I was just reading recently how he said that he's been meditating for over 35 years and he, would, he says that TM is the single most important reason for the success he has had. And now he teaches his whole team. And I think it's a really good foundation for us to just have that clarity around, you know, we need to pull the arrow back, this idea of building the foundation down deep so that we come back into our business activity with really good energy, mental clarity, we're on top of stress and get our day going from there. So the other aspect to it, which again you, you touched on really beautifully, um, is this idea of what I would call our natural activity. And again in terms of our health, keeping those that, that energy and vitality up, we have this concept in the Eastern traditions of what's called Dharma. And Dharma is really our natural purpose. And in business, it's absolutely essential that even before we get into how we market our business, how we develop our leadership 
capabilities, how we become a new maverick, is to be really clear that we're actually doing the type of activity that is based on our, our natural purpose in life. We often hear about passion in business and passion is very, very important, but there's a deeper significance to this Eastern approach to passion and it's, it's about our natural duty or our natural purpose. And the way we find that in our business is to connect these two aspects of enjoyment just activities that we just love to do. We could work all day doing that activity without feeling the sense of time. You know, we don't get stressed. It's just like, you know, we do in, as kids in sport or music or art. It's just that, that easy, enjoyable activity. And the other aspect to it is, is just what activities we naturally do really, really well. What do we do where people just compliment on us that we seem to do easily, with less effort, with less force, with less strain? And that's nature's formula to healthy, long-term performance. And you look at any high-level business person that sustained high-level performance over years and decades, they've been able to combine their business around what they most enjoy with the activities that they naturally do most easily and effortlessly. And that's what we always need to have that foundation of. We can go into that deeper, but I think it just for now sets the, sets the founda foundation. And so what I want to do just for the remaining time is just to go into a few different areas, two or three areas that are just more specific on, on how we can maximize this idea of energy and maintain our health while obviously people are very busy and long work hours, which is the nature of high level leadership and business performance. So the first one, is actually a, a new one and it's, it's very interesting because now we're finding with our shift in business to be working more indoors. What we've done is actually distanced ourselves from two of the most health promoting energy giving things on our planet. One is the sun above. We now know that indoor workers and particularly business leaders, they're indoors, they're in meetings and conferences a lot each day. We actually get nine times less the UV, the solar radiation on our skin, yet our um, rates of skin cancer and melanoma are skyrocketing. And this is particularly important for indoor workers and it's this idea that the sun is nature's antidote. You spoke about de depression before. It's one of the most important things for keeping our mental um, concentration, alertness, productivity at its peak. We need natural sunlight through our eyes each day of the week and also just physically in terms of a range of illnesses and health conditions, connection to the sun is really, really important. So this idea of just getting outside once or twice a day, particularly early morning, we'll see how we can combine that with exercise in a moment, but also in the middle of the day. See, lunch breaks is a really important time for getting outside. The other one of interest is this idea of what's called earthing or grounding. Again, our whole shift, particularly in our business environments these days, to be working and living more indoors um, in high-rise office buildings is that we are also exposing ourselves to greater and greater technological stimulation, whether it's through mobile phone, laptop computers, Wi-Fi. And what's happening within our physiologies is, one, it's disturbing our brain patternings, our brain functioning, but also increasing what's called inflammation in the tissues of our body. And modern science is showing that 90% on good estimates of all Western chronic disease is related to inflammation or free radical damage in the body. And what we're now finding just over the last year or two is a big basis of that is that we've disconnected ourselves from actual Mother Earth. We walk on the ground, we wear the best insulators known to mankind, rubber and plastic sold shoes. We work, as we've said, in high-rise buildings. And we actually don't connect to the ground anymore. So as business leaders, I know it sounds strange and we often don't think of these things, you know, getting back to nature, but really, really important that we, again, daily or at least a couple of times a week, make that time to, to get outside to actually you can make some phone calls. The way to do it in a time management way, a productive way, is to get out of the office three or four times a day. So you might need to make some phone calls rather than making them at your desk, you know, hunched over on the computer. You get a list, you make four or five phone calls, you get outside, you get walk on the grass wherever you can, concrete, 
you get some sun, get some fresh air, clear the mind while you're still being productive. One of the best things I invested in some years ago was a portable dictaphone or a voice recorder. Everyone now has these on their iPhones or smartphones. Um, I find it even better to have a standalone voice recorder. It fits in your pocket. It's very small. But you can do emails. You can write blogs, whatever it's in your business that you need to do on a computer. You can speak those into your voice recorder while waiting at an airport. You're in the car driving home. As I'm sort of leading here now is you can combine it with, say, exercise or earthing or getting out in the sun. So you're actually looking after your health. You're maximizing your health performance but while still being productive, being productive and you're not taking away from that. Um, so they're just some ideas around, around that area. But they're showing that our exposure to electromagnetic radiation, particularly in our office places, as I said, with Wi-Fi, laptops, computers, mobile phones, is creating a lot of damage um, or potential damage both in our mental functioning and our physical health. So using what's called earthing, indoor earthing products, or just getting outside on regular um, occasions can really help to reduce this damage and keep ourselves at sort of maximum health performance. Um, and the last one, just to finish on, um, which people know, and I know many people listening on the call will already do this because they are high-level business performers already, but if I was to ask, and I often do this in seminars, you know, what these people have in common, uh, Rich Branson, Rupert Murdoch, Lorna James, the head of the international Lorna Jane business empire, Ginny Nellis, who runs Boost Juice, another international um, entrepreneur, very successful. Um, in Australia, we have our present and our past prime ministers also added to the, this list, Russell Simmons. Um, Virgin America boss David Cush. Um, all these people have in common is that they start their day either religiously or regularly with exercise. And we all know how important exercise is for health and well-being. But what I find is people often put this at the end of their day or it's, you know, when I get work done, then, you know, I'll get the exercise. But a real hallmark of many, many high-level business performers who are able to maintain maximum performance consistently over years and decades is they start their day with exercise. And this is a point that I'd really like to, to bring home. It just will set up your health and energy for not only each day, but for your entire career. It's a really, really important one. Of course, the other benefit of exercising first thing in the morning is that you generally start before your brain realizes what you're doing, which can also be, be very beneficial. But, um, but that was my thoughts, just to give a bit of a, uh, a scope for things, some, some slightly new with the, the earthing and this idea of the sunlight, very important, and then some just more broader, really to, to reinforce what you started off from on with, which is this foundation of consciousness and, and doing that, that sort of natural activity, which I think is really important for our health and and well-being. Of course, not to mention um, sleep, which is absolutely critical. We now know that many high-level business people um, actually don't require as much sleep as other people, and that's when they do their activity based on this, this idea of dharma. When you're in your flow state, when you're in that state where you're just you're passionate, you're purposeful about what you do, we actually don't need as much sleep. We get into this like a frictionless flow. It's like a train that running on a track without friction. It just goes at very high speeds, needs very little rest. And this is the same for business people when we can get that. But for many others who maybe aren't in that complete frictionless flow state, um, this idea of sleep quality is really, really critical. And we know from the Eastern sciences that it's not just how much sleep we get. The human physiology doesn't necessarily need a certain amount of sleep per night. More important is when it gets it. And it actually needs it earlier in the evening cycle. Um, in my Eastern training, they specify very clearly that it's from around 10 p.m. that the body goes into its what's called nighttime rejuvenation cycle. This is when the human physiology is at its peak, riding nature's wave to get maximum rejuvenation, to revitalize the tissues, to establish the memories from our previous day, to detox the system, to revitalize the liver and the kidneys and all the internal organs so that we actually wake up completely fresh, we feel light, clear, energized, we have the clarity to plan our day, to 
to strategize new things for our new day and to be the best leaders we can. So again, I know it's something that we put at the bottom of the list, this, this idea of quality sleep, but it's really, really important. Some listeners on the call today could actually transform not only their, their business life but their personal lives just by getting to sleep that little bit earlier in the evening cycle. And I've just been on a website called Business Insider and I had 23 of the highest success people throughout the world who actually start their day very early in the morning. And this is a very, again, a common attribute or hallmark of high performance business people. This idea of starting the day early morning, 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning, when you've got that time to yourself, you can get that clarity to plan the day, often get work done um, before the phones start ringing. And the way to do that, obviously, is to get to bed early also to get into this habit of starting the day early to work rather than working later and later into the night. So um, that's a little wrap for me. Um, I hope that uh, helps put some foundation to the, the rest of the great calls to come. I know Emily's going to go through some great things with, with diet and nutrition, which uh, I'm sure will compliment. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for having me on the call. Uh, it's great to connect and uh, I hope we can launch uh, big things from here. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, I actually got my earthing mat out because I knew, you know, what you were going to say was quite groundbreaking, and everyone else is going to say some pretty groundbreaking things. So I wanted to be earthed so I didn't get my head in the clouds. But uh, thank you very much, Mark. There was, uh, you know, some very um, powerful things that can be practically executed. And we're going to continue on this health theme um, with someone who's very dear to me, Emily Rose Shaw. She's a certified health coach, and we want to continue on this because obviously health. If you don't have health, you don't have much at all. So Emily's going to go a bit de uh, deeper into the diet aspect. She's partnered with the Earth Diet Organization. But at the same time, she goes beyond just what you eat to how to really be nourished physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, and she'll give you the number one healthy, delicious, fast, and easy food that increases your clarity, energy, and immunity. So take it away, Emily. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Ramon, and Mark, what amazing points you brought up, a wonderful overview of health and some really practical tips that we can all take away and use. And so I am going to kind of go to something quite specific tonight. In order to be a game-changing leader, you must have a clear mind, stable energy, and a really strong immune system in order to perform at your maximum potential. But what is just as important, or arguably even more important, is what kind of role model you are to your team. Your team can really tell how clear and focused you are, your energy level, and they can tell whether you're sick or healthy. So I think it's absolutely vital that you set the example and know that your physical health really does contribute to the health of your entire team. Now, there are many recommendations I could provide to help you develop your ideal game-changing diet, but what if I told you you could have more energy, clarity, and immunity simply by adding one thing to your daily diet? And you probably want to know. So what I'm about to share with you tonight has really given me and my clients these things, stable energy, sharp mental clarity, and supercharged immunity and therefore dramatically increase the quality of our lives. Almost every single day for the past three years, I've started my day with a green smoothie. <laughs> so my sincere hope is that by sharing with you how healthy, delicious, fast, and beneficial green smoothies are, you will join us in this green smoothie revolution. So let's begin with the fact that greens are the most nutrient-dense food on the planet, according to best-selling author and nutrition researcher Dr. Jill Furman, among countless other health experts. So the greens and overall nutrition in green smoothies reduces the risk of disease and provides that clarity and energy for our minds. So I just want to give you a few facts about these benefits. You may be aware that the USDA recommends half of our plate be fruits and vegetables, but the average American gets nowhere near the recommended amount. But blending greens makes it really easy to get them in at breakfast time. So by breakfast time, you've already had at least a couple servings of those wonderful fruits and vegetables packed with vitamins, minerals, and special plant nutrients called phytochemicals that help us prevent all kinds of chronic diseases. 
Now, blending is also great for the digestive system because it essentially does those first parts of digestion for us. And we hear a lot about digestion, but many of us have a variety of, of those digestive complaints. But digestion is really only half of the story because absorbing nutrients is also critical. And the structure of plants is made up of undigestible cellulose, which the body has a hard time extracting all those wonderful vitamins and minerals from. So blending causes those cell walls to burst while retaining those nutrients so we can better absorb them. So then our cells absorb this potent nutrition and cleanse and alkalize the blood. The SAD diet, the standard American diet, is really highly acidic, creating an acidic body. And many types of cancers and other diseases thrive in this acidic environment. But green smoothies help to neutralize the pH of our blood. And then last but not least, a lot of us don't get enough fiber in our diet. And since the whole food is blended, the high fiber content of fruits and vegetables remain. And that wonderful fiber acts as a broom, and it sweeps clean the digestive tract, keeping our elimination regular and really helping us to feel light and mentally clear. So just to recap, the blending the greens in the morning allows us to meet those nutritional recommendations much easier, absorb those nutrients, and cleanse the blood. But green smoothies aren't just healthy. They're really absolutely delicious. And maybe you make faces at those people with the green drinks, or people may have made comments about your strange-looking drink at work. But if you just get over the fact that it's green and really try it, I bet you'll be pleasantly surprised. And I do recommend following a recipe at first to make sure your green smoothie tastes great. So as you see on our webinar, there's a link to my favorite green smoothie I designed for this wonderful organization Ramon spoke of called the Earth Diet. And this smoothie I designed is called the Apple Protein Cleansing Smoothie. And I'll just give you a few um, of the rest of the ingredients here. It starts with coconut water, which is wonderful. It's full of electrolytes, perfect for before or after a workout. Banana and apple are added for sweetness. A lemon is added for flavor balancing, and together with the fruit, it helps mask the taste of any greens. Flaxseed is added for really high quality fat and those omega-3 fatty acids we need for our brain and other, other parts as well. And I recommend Sun Warrior Protein Powder uh, to use because it really blends well with, other, with the other ingredients. And last but not least, the greens in this particular smoothie is parsley. You know, a lot of us use parsley, you know, as just an herb for, um, you know, to add to different dishes. Uh, but it is actually one of the most cleansing foods on the planet because of how much chlorophyll it has in it. So if you're brand new to green smoothies, use just a handful at first, but your taste buds will change over time, and you're likely to start craving the taste of greens, and you're actually going to want to add more. So just really quick, a couple of tips to make your smoothies taste really great. You want to make sure your fruit is ripe because it will taste naturally sweeter. And if you want it sweeter than that, I recommend adding a date or two, some dried fruit, or a little bit of stevia. And for a colder smoothie, uh, use frozen fruit, not ice, because ice tends to water down the flavor, while frozen fruit adds a lot of extra flavor. So now we know green smoothies are incredibly healthy, they're very delicious, and they also have a lot of benefits. So besides having more energy, more clarity, and immunity, uh, here are some benefits, additional benefits to share with you. So the number one that almost everyone wants is weight loss, and that is a wonderful benefit of green smoothies because they're so filling, um, but they don't typically contain a lot of calories. They also reduce cravings for sweets and carbs, and actually increase the desire to eat other healthy foods. They improve digestion, as I spoke of before. And also, there is um, better hydration when we drink green smoothies because of the high water content of fruits and vegetables and the liquid that goes into making them. And then last but not least, they are really fast and easy to make. 
even when you're in a hurry and you have to run out the door because the prep and cleanup takes literally five to ten minutes. All you have to do is throw your ingredients in the blender, blend it up, transfer it to your, a jar or some thermos, and you can take it with you. It's totally portable. Sip it throughout the day. It's much faster to prepare, clean up, and consume than a salad. So just to wrap up, now you know the number one healthy, delicious, and fast food for more clarity, energy, and immunity. And it really is the first uh, ideal step to developing your diet for maximum impact as a new Maverick leader. Taking this step is really stepping into your power as a leader because you're showing your commitment to your health and really setting that example for your team to be at their best. So I really encourage everyone to try the green smoothie recipe provided here and the huge number of free recipes online at theearthdiet.org and join us in this green smoothie revolution. So again, it's an honor to be here and I hope um, you join us and that was helpful for you to up your nutrition game. Thank you very much, Emily. I've been the benefit of Emily's green smoothie for the last six months, and it, literally I feel completely different, and uh, I don't know what I'd do without my green smoothie anymore. So I've got a, <laughs> I've got a bit of an addiction going. So uh, the next gentleman we will introduce is a good friend and a brother, Mr. Michael Sternfeld. Uh He is a multi-dimensional uh, human being, and so much so that we were actually going to produce this in 3D or 4D just so you could see that aspect of him. But Michael has uh, done some amazing things in his life. He was involved in producing the Change Begins Within uh, event in New York City to raise money for helping kids uh, learn to meditate uh, in schools to reduce crime. And he was very successful in that event. He had the likes of uh, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr and Jerry Seinfeld and Sheryl Crow all coordinated together to put this on. Uh, he, he's also been a body centered therapist for the last 25 years or so and, and also ties into his professional dance training in Chicago uh, with a professional dance training company there. And he is actually the producer of the world's longest audio book. It's, this is no small feat. This book this is like 70 some hours or, or longer. And Michael produced it. It's the Ramayan. It's the great epic of, of India. And it was quite a feat to pull off. So I'm just going to hand it over to Michael to really give his insight on how to develop full team dedication through his aspect of intelligence. Thank you, Ramon. By the way, i got to start just saying we talked yesterday, Emily. I did green smoothie this morning, and I got to tell you, the recipe was really good. I'll tell you later. Woo All so right. Emily Fantastic. has a way of getting everyone. <laughs> Glad to hear it. So um, here we are. We're starting with body presence. That's something I founded about twenty some years ago. It's what happens. I was a, I danced with a company in Chicago and companies in New York. And when a professional dancer gets a little older, we got to figure out some way to translate this deep understanding of our body. And what I've begun, it's, I think it's really amazing that it's coming out that now even in the corporate world, people are recognizing the value of body intelligence. Now that was preceded by the work of Daniel Goldman, who came out about, it's all, I think it's almost 15, 17 years ago with the book Emotional Intelligence. And that really at first was seemed a little unusual, it seemed a little bit on the edge as a counteraction to just the IQ phenomena, which that was considered the most important element to determine success is basically how smart you were. Basically, if you could make fast, rational, data-driven decisions with your mind, you were going to be successful as a leader in the business world. But now what's happened, the fast pace of life has gotten so great, we're moving so fast, and there's so many variables. When you're just thinking with your mind alone, people are finding that there's a limitation there. And that's why Ramon brought out these some of these movies like Lucy and Limitless, which I also really liked. There's this incredible range, a super fluid possibility, super in all of us. And I don't think that it's just expanding our mind alone. What I'm going to suggest is that we're to really expand our full dimensionality, 
is to go into, even within our own body and heart and mind, there's a, a three-pronged approach, really. We not only have our IQ, which is the intelligence based in our mind, but we also have this incredible intelligence based in our heart. People who access their emotional field, which is based in the heart, we find that Goldman found in his book and that it's gone on with a number of research, these people are actually, in many cases, more effective as leaders because they have the ability to tune into their own emotions and to listen to and respond to the emotions of others around them. And that really changes their ability to lead because people are really driven often emotionally by emotional factors that um, are beyond what we normally see. And for example, the heart seems to have its own nervous system. There's 40,000 neurons in the heart. It has an electrical field that's 60 times greater than our brain. This is what some research is showing. It has a, a magnetic field 5,000 times greater than our brain, meaning there's an intelligence in, the, in, in our heart, in our emotions, that gives us information from our environment all the time. It's incredibly crucial for assessing our own emotional states and the emotional states of the people we're working with. And then even deeper than that, not deeper, just a parallel, a third element is our gut. We call it, all martial artists, all dancers know this, is our center. They call it our center. And really that's where we move from. We have a gravitational center, which is right in, deep in our abdomen. And all athletes, dancers, martial artists know that. That's really where you move from. Now that's even more impressive in the sense that there's 100 million neurons. It's called in our enteric nervous system, in our gut meaning there's an incredible field of attention, uh, intelligence operating there in our gut. So what I'm building up as a model here, we have our brain, we have our heart, and we have our gut. It's kind of like the three in The Wizard of Oz when they go, you know, they're all looking for a heart, he was looking for a brain, and we have those all inside of us right now. You put them all together, then you really start getting something really profound happening. Now, this, these may sound abstract. I want to take this down into a personal level because all of us, all of us, even if you're not, don't think you're skilled on the, your level of emotional intelligence and don't feel that you're really in tune on that level or highly developed, you are. You just don't fully know it yet. When you walk into a room, when you're working with people or in your personal life, you walk into a room and you find that there are certain people you naturally just feel good with your heart kind of opens, you feel great. There's other people that you find there's a contraction. You don't maybe like them, or maybe you have some judgment towards them. You're already finding, you're already responding from your body's field of emotional intelligence right there. You might not be consciously aware of it. You're making decisions all the time. You go to a party and you just find that there's certain people you're open with, certain people you contract with, and it's barely something that you're aware of doing. Now, with emotional intelligence, you can train yourself in the ability so you become more aware of your emotional states, become more aware of the emotional states of others. It's just becoming conscious of something that you're already doing. Now, let's go to our gut level. That's even more. That's our instinctual level. That's something where you find you have a gut level response. Have you ever talking to someone in a, in, a, in a business deal? where they seem like they're really nice and really straightforward and you just have this not good feeling. You feel it in your gut and it's under the table. You don't even notice, but you just kind of don't like their energy. There's something you don't trust about them. That's your gut level response kicking in right there. Once again, we're having all those, those kind of gut level responses all the time. It's just a matter of becoming more aware of it. So these are different aspects of our autonomic nervous system that are we're barely conscious of, but just think about the, this level of intelligence we're talking about. Ramon talked about at the beginning of all these different levels of intelligence that uh, Malcolm Gladwell talked about going beyond them. But just if we could master our, we already, we're already working on our level of our IQ, but to go to our EQ, emotional field of intelligence, and our BQ, our body field of intelligence, we find that those are adds a whole new dimensionality to the way we can gather information from our environment and respond to that information. And the thing is, really, when you look at it, the body is genius. The body is really genius. Think of what it do, our autonomic nervous system does. It is, it's a master choreographer. It's just 
putting blood through our, all of our veins and arteries. The, our brain is sending neural impulses at millions of miles an hour, <laughs> an hour. We have our endocrine system. There's just an incredible mastery in our muscular skeletal system, and it's all working together in perfect coordination. That's a master choreographer working in this genius level of the body. Now, what, what I'm talking about is shifting into that zone level, which great athletes, great CEOs find, where there's just the whole is greater than some of the parts, where you're responding on that deep level of your gut level knowing, gut level instincts. Your heart is involved in the process as well, where you have deep feelings of yourself and the people that you work with. And also you're using your finely tuned human discrimination to assess what's really true and what's not true. And, and that's, we, that's where we need our discrimination. That's there. Our, our brain is really valuable. I'm not talking about overruling that. Now you've got a wholeness that has all this information. And the thing is, these are areas that all of us can train. You're already doing them anyway. You're already darn good at them. It's just a matter of becoming a little bit more conscious so that you can respond to all the point that I brought up in the beginning is in the fast-paced world of business today, you have to go beyond just that analytical approach of your mind. You have to go with this fine level of your feeling, which is really tuned in to what's right or wrong and what's really going to work and what isn't. And that gut level knowing, which really responds to situations I think that you should avoid. That's that instinctual knowing, danger. I don't want to go there. I don't trust that person. When you add in those levels of intelligence, you really, that to me, you don't have to take like in Limitless when you have this draw, uh, when Bradley Cooper takes that uh, um, chemical that makes him do it. We have that capability of genius right inside of us. All we have to do is access it. Now, the way that comes together, as Ramon talked about, is in this field of consciousness. Because consciousness unites our gut, heart, and mind into one big wholeness. So when you, I, consciousness is really the source. If you can identify your intelligence at that level, these others can develop. But you also can do specific techniques and approaches to develop that gut level sense, to refine your heart and your emotions, to bring more awareness to your heart and all the feelings of, of yourself and the people around you, around you. And that's, of course, essential in working with a team and building team dedication because that's just what all great leaders are finding. And what we see in great leaders is that they're very skilled in their level of emotional intelligence. So I've just kind of given an overview of what's possible. And I'm just going to invite you to, to try this out. And even for a second right now, if you can think of some issue that's really pressing on you right now, some in issue in your business or in your emotional life or in your family life, some issue that's just really up for you right now. I'm sure you've spent lots of time thinking about it. How do, I, how do I work with that? How do I respond to that? What's the best choice? You weigh options. I'd suggest just put your hand over your heart for a second, or you could tap on your heart, and just kind of sense what's your emotional feeling, just the emotional sense you have about that issue. Are you feeling joy about it? Are you feeling sadness, anger, fear? Those are the emotional level. And I just add that level in in terms of your decision-making process, your underlying feeling which knows no rhyme or reason and no logic. Let that go for a second. Then put your hand right over your belly, your gut level knowing. Look at that same issue with just what's your gut level feeling about it. And if your gut level feeling is that, that's the more the primal kind of feeling. And you can just kind of check in on your gut level knowing. You bring the problem or the issue up, check in on how your gut is feeling. So the next time, we did it right now just very quickly, but just you can see that this is a way to approach your decision-making process, your work in business or your personal life, to check how you're feeling in your gut, how you're feeling in your heart, and how your mind is evaluating. Weigh those three equally. And I guess the last point that I wanted to say is the reason why I work with body wisdom and body intelligence, because even though emotional intelligence has already become quite ingrained in the corporate world, in leadership development, 
body intelligence is kind of considered less important right now, but it's true that you know from experience that for every emotional state, there's a corresponding physiological state, meaning when you're feeling fear, there's a physical response in your body, your, your palms sweat, your heart starts to race a little bit. So the, really, to feel emotions, you have to be a little bit more embodied, grounded in your body. And that's what I work with people with body presence. You can take a look at my site. <clears throat> what I'll invite you to do if you're interested is I do body readings online via Skype. I know it seems a little strange, but it's possible. In a half an hour, these are free body readings. I'll give you some feedback on your state of your union, state of the union inside of you, or the state of the disunion and what we can do about it. So I want to give you some practical tools of how you can learn a little bit more about this innate ability in us to access our field of emotional and body intelligence and how we can really get kind of function in that limitless kind of way. So that's it for my piece today. Thank you very much, Michael. And I've actually experienced Michael's uh, sessions, and he really nailed me. And I was actually quite annoyed that someone actually knew what was going on inside of me. But he is very good at detecting and helping you detect what's really going on between those levels. And it's so true. I mean, a great spiritual teacher of mine actually said that all business decisions are really made on that fine feeling level. And one of our top clients who does a lot of these big mergers and acquisitions actually said in a big meeting, he'll be very quiet for about a minute, which in a big meeting like that is a long time, and people will wonder what he's doing. And what he's, It's a sweat tactic, but in actual fact, he's feeling within himself how he feels about the individual and the company that he's looking at and, and the timing of it all. So it's a, a very powerful process uh, to plug into. So now we're going to evolve on with our speakers and we're going to introduce Mr. David Williams. And I first came across uh, David. He was kind of has an indirect influence in the creation of the Leadership Authority site, newmavericks.com, because we were thinking about this, Mark Imperial and my other business partner, Polo, and we, we found that Mavericks was a good name. And then we searched online and the first article that came up was an article about uh, Maverick leadership uh, based on James Bond that David had incredibly written. And it was a, a wonderful article and I delved a, bit, a little bit more into deeply what he's written about. And, and he's, he's one of these gentlemen is phenomenal because he not only is a great thought leader and shares that with the community, but he also runs a company uh, and is very hugely successful in running that company and that industry that he's in. Uh, his president just said to me today that he's uh, broken another breakthrough record with the growth of the company. And at the same time, he gives a lot to the community with his volunteering his time and um, nonprofits and things like that. So David is one of those masterful integrated leaders that can share his knowledge and can also practically live it and then also have time to give to the community. So uh, David, I'm, I'm really curious. I haven't seen this presentation. Um, I know the book. Um, I'm going to get it uh, as soon as we get off this. But I really want to just hear these insights about the seven non-negotiables of winning. So it's all yours. Thank you, Ramon. And I'm sitting here with my hand over my heart, as Michael said, and it's, it's beating really fast. <laughs> and then I put, I put it down to my stomach and I realize it's way past dinner time. <laughs> so I, I think they're both working. Well, and we should get someone to fix you up a green smoothie. Yeah, well, <laughs> I want to comment on that. I start every day for the last maybe 15 years of my life with a smoothie. Wow. Amazing. And I love I, it. And some greens involved. It's not a pure green one, and I'm sure yours is better, but I, I really believe in getting those, those important nutrients into my body as soon as I wake up. And before I head to the gym, back to Mark's point, I don't know if I've missed um, exercising. I, I, I'll, I'll probably miss three or four days a year. and. Wow. That's part of my, my regiment. If I don't wake up and have um, some time for prayer meditation and then some reading time and then hitting the gym, my day is just not successful. Mm. A lot of other successful things could happen, but to all of your points, all of your expert points, um, I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm doing pretty good in all those areas. and I really believe in what you're saying and I feel very honored to be amongst you because I'm, I'm not really an expert at anything 
but what I do, what I can share with you is what my company is expert at mm -hmm. and how we've evolved into these seven non-negotiables and why they are so important to the people that work at Fishbowl. And to start, I, when Fishbowl, when I came to Fishbowl about 11, about 11 years ago, I wanted to create a holding environment that was really focused on the individual wellness and happiness of the, of the employee. Because I believe that if, a, if an employee left work happy and actually more invigorated than when they came versus being fatigued, that they would be a, a better contributor in, in the community, they'd be a better significant other, it'd be a better mother or father, son or daughter. And I, I believe that could take place in the work, work environment, in the workplace. And that was fairly contrarian to all of my other friends and, and other places that I had worked before that had been great companies and, and great leadership companies and had great content but did not have the stamina to live their own content. So we came up with human attributes called seven non-negotiables. Each one is a non-negotiable that we'll go through in a few minutes. And we believed if a person lived those and strived to do better in each one of these areas in their lives each day, one of our little mantras is we, we try each day a little bit harder to do a little bit better. And we have seen the fruits of that by focusing on people versus quarterly numbers versus growth versus profits versus um, acquisition. We, we have found that if we invest in our people's ability to be better people in our workplace, we produce great results. And we, we put our money behind that when we give away stock options we will have our employees come in and they choose which two non-negotiables they want to improve in that year. And if they've made improvements in those areas and they're noted and can be um, shared by what they did in the workplace, they are then entitled to stock options. I've set aside 49% of the company for the employees and the way they earn it is not who they are, not what role they have, not, not how tenured they are, or what, how much they produced. It, it, are you being a better person? And if so, then we believe that you're a better contributor. So we look at it from a, a different point of view, and, and you hear a lot about the law of the harvest, or you reap what you sow or you, you put something here and then years later you may be able to pluck it up and it, it will be worth something. But we, we've been doing it now for a decade. And by the seven non-negotiables, if you wanted to just show that screen, um, we can quickly go through that. I think the screen four, slide four, right there. Um, those, are the, those are the seven non-negotiables that I'm speaking to that we, we ask, we look for, we, we expect these type of characteristics to manifest themselves in the individuals in our company. And some can't do it. And it's an interesting process that if you create an environment that is focused on the individual, and we keep saying we're in the people business, and we just create killer software, if you keep, keep focusing on these non-negotiables or these characteristics and, and, and speak to them and, and help people become more courageous, help people become more um, respectful to one another. That if you, if you focus on those in the workplace, work takes care of itself and results happen. To, I mean, just an hour ago, probably 45 minutes ago, we had our best month of the year. Well, did, did, we, did we do anything different? No. We just, we just happened to be focused and ready to have a little more courage 
we went out on the limb in a, in a few areas and had a little bit more belief in one another. Um, we've been loyal to a process of, of hibernating our software so it will be a better product. It's taken 14 months to do that. And we, we, we actually put these same non-negotiables into our behavior in our discussions when we, when, we, when we go about our business. So if I were to say, okay, in your families or in any holding environment, maybe you, you participate in a board at a university, perhaps you're working with youth, troubled youth. Um, you could use any of these non-negotiables and start somewhere and help them to become a little bit better each day or try to be a little bit better each day. There's many, many days that we all know that we try to be what the, the other experts that have gone before me have shared. We try to do those things, but some, day, some days this aren't as good as others. And that's okay. So what do you do? You pick yourself up and you just try a little bit harder to go a little bit more into like this respect. Um, for example, we just put a, as a bullet, empathic listening we feel is vital to be respectful to one another. And that is just like as we're speaking now that you would wait until I'm, I was done before you interrupt me. Or you may want to hold your thought until I was done and then maybe say, let me make sure I understand you correctly. And or you don't have judgment. Or you're not waiting for that person to be done speaking so that you can just share what you have on your mind. It's vital to have respect in listening and communication and then in how we deal with one another. We can go to the next one and I'll share a couple of other things in, in conclusion. Um, we have respect and then if you want to go to the next slide. Um, belief was a, was, a, was a real big one to us. We've had many, many times to run a company that is debt free. We fund ourselves, all owned by employees. And um, to have the belief that you can continue to do that and grow at a pace where we're in an Inc. 500, 5,000, eight years in a row is pretty remarkable to me. Um, it, it, most people would say that cannot happen. You must have outside injections of cash. You have to have outside board members. You have to have outside this or that. Well, you don't. You could, the, 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 the beauty and the power resides within your people. I would, I would say our company is full of blue collar people, hard working, put themselves through school. Our mean age is 28, mostly um, male dominant software development company. And it's the, the type of employee base, demographic base that usually jump to the next best, best gig that they can find. Some do, maybe one or two a year leave. But those are the ones that don't really want to have this culture and don't really want to maybe change in some ways. They kind of set in their ways, even at a young age. And they don't get this whole cultural thing. We don't even speak of it as a culture. We just say, this is how we want to treat one another. This is how we want to treat our customers. This is how we want to treat our key stakeholders that develop for us outside the company and bring great products and services to us. This is how we want to treat one another every time we're together. And then back to the, my comment earlier, people go home happy. I, I often ask a spouse or a significant other, is, is John happy when he comes home? Oh, yes, he is. Very happy. He loves what he does. Well, okay, occasionally I'll hear, well, no, John's not happy when he comes home. Those are the things I want to hear. Often they're just in a, in a role that they're not being fulfilled in or they've got something that they're not able to express, or they haven't been able to improve like the rest of their teammates are, and they feel like they're being left behind. Those are great opportunities to bring up these non-negotiables and, and have them choose where they want to work. So I'm a big believer in that you actually let these people soar by giving them not only goals and, and opportunities through delegation and um, really a frontier for them to go and achieve whatever they want to achieve, but also just give them the guidelines and the, and the fence posts call these non-negotiables. And those are the things that they can hang on to when life gets a little, little shaky or we're having a tough issue at work or we lost earlier this year one of our, our, our dear employees to a bike accident that a truck ran right, right over and we've got a big biking group there and it's, it was really hard to go through losing somebody that you love so much. 
but these non-negotiables really become the foundation for any type of difficulty and also opportunity that comes your way. And you, you, we kind of handle them the same way, if that makes sense. And we, we don't get too, probably too excited. We don't ever get too down. We just kind of keep moving forward, believing in each other, that we're in the people business. And if we help one another become better in, in, in being a better person, that will translate into productivity. That will translate into good results. That will translate into you being a good community contributor and a good family contributor, et cetera. So that's what we do at Fishbowl. And, and it's been really an exciting adventure for me in my stage of life. This is my last gig. I mean, I'll give you the same when a VC calls up to want to buy our company or invest in our company. I say, you know, we're debt free, we're employee owned, and um, death is my exit strategy. I probably don't fit your formula. And that's really the, the belief of all of us. If you were to ask probably 90 plus percent of anyone that works at Fishbowl that we call fishbowlers, what are they going to do for the next 10, 20, 30 years of their life? They're, they'd all say that I'll be at Fishbowl. We have a 100-year plan. We're able to have a 100-year business plan because we have these non-negotiables that are timeless. It won't be um, they won't, won't be out of fashion in five years. Actually, they'll be more and more and more in fashion, hopefully, as, as we mature in our, in our respective roles and, and as the world comes closer and closer together. I, I just hope and pray that these become something that's more universally shared in the business community instead of kind of put down and numbers take precedence. And, and I just hope that, that people that are listening is try to flip it around and put your people really first by investing in your people and, and you will see the results that you hope to obtain by doing it the way you, you will see the results that you're trying to obtain and more so by doing it this way. And I promise you, I, it's not just something I've watched or listened or read a book about. It's what, the whole book and all these things are what we've been doing as a company. What I write for in Forbes with Mary Michelle Scott, my business partner, or just the things that we do at Fishbowl. And a lot of times I'll get a comment from people that will say, okay, that sounds really good, but tell me what you really do. Well, no, we really do these things, and they really work. And so really be in the people business if you, if you want to be. If you choose not to be, you probably not, should not be hiring people. And if you are hiring people, make sure you're really investing in them for the long term, not just to use them up and burn them out and then bring in a new fresh crop. No, these are, these are lifelong friends of mine. I can't imagine anyone today at Fishbowl ever leaving. And I would, of course some will, but I just, they're, they're, they become family and, and they're everything to me. And so I put my, my money where my mouth is. I put our company where um, we express ourselves to be. And we do so by giving the company away. We keep it debt free. Um, people become, these young 22, 23, 25 year olds become owners, stock option um, owners and owners of the company. And that is just the coolest thing in town to be able to be able to be able to see people that are happy, invigorated, excited about what they're doing and going home to be able to be a better contributor in all their other more important roles than, than, than they have in the workplace. So I hope that made a little sense. It's a little different from the rest of the experts. So again, I'll just close by saying this. I'm, I'm expert at hiring great people and let, then letting them run. Fantastic. David, I mean, that's just such an amazing uh, model of you know, what real business is, you know, what, what creates business is people and what creates people is what's going on in their, their awareness and these values that you've clearly defined uh, are the values of, of great people and, and great business. So uh, congratulations and uh, anything we can do to support getting this sort of uh, platform out there into the world, we'll definitely do. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you for having me and being a part of this amazing group of people. I've, I've been so inspired by just hearing every all the expertise. I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling my body, looking at my body when you're speaking, making sure I'm thinking I'm not using all my capacity. 
<laughs> well, mate, well, just to develop this, you've got obviously a huge amount of capacity there, and it's, it's going to unfold more and more, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll go right. even uh, deeper with what you've got now, and uh, it's just the best is yet to come. Best is yet to come. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. So next we are going to roll on to Mr. Mark Imperial. And Mark's given me an introduction, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. But I came across Mark. I can't remember how I came across Mark, but I just felt this guy was really cool, really sincere, uh, has a lot of integrity, just tells it how it is with marketing. And I kind of, you know, he's like the Fonz and Bruce Lee combined in one. Very cool, very sharp, very ninja in the way he approaches things, but with a lot of deep um, truthfulness. And he is a marketing expert. He's actually a protege of Direct Response. Uh, Master Dan Kennedy is the founder of Imperial Action, uh, which is a, a business development agency. His agency helps business owners and professionals grow their bottom line uh, by, being, by being seen as the obvious standalone choice in their field. Uh, he's created marketing science called Action Branding, which is a marriage of both direct response marketing for fast sales as well as branding for accelerated acceptance and exponential reach. Uh, Mark is also an event marketer and a voice for some of the world's most famous brands, including Nintendo, Pokemon, and Under Armour, just to name a few. And he hosts a weekly business show in Chicago as well as writing a monthly a column in Dan Kennedy's No BS Marketing Letter called Grow Your Local Business. And you can find out more about Mark in, the, in just a minute and live, and you can also learn more at his websites, markimperial.com and imperialaction.com. And just Mark is our final speaker, and he's going to wrap things up on a, a very marketing perspective. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the box there for any of our experts, and we'll get to the Q&A after Mark's uh, talk. So take it away, Mark. Well, Ramon, thank you. Uh, the the Fonz and, and Bruce Lee, that's just genius. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. But first and foremost, hey, congratulations on your inaugural webinar because this has been absolutely brilliant. Everybody, I want you guys, I want to hear a round of applause. Everybody, turn your microphones on. And how about a round of applause? Congratulations, Ramon um, and everybody. This has been absolutely brilliant. Um, I appreciate the kind words. Um, I'm excited to be part of this. I, I, I truly am. I was very excited um, when Ramon reached out to me initially about this. And, um, and when we crossed paths, it, uh, I just you know, realized um, all the things that I still don't know <laughs> in the world. Mm -hmm. you know, we all think we know a whole bunch about our, our, uh, about our field, but then there's still more that you should know. Uh, I'm honored to be here in a group of obviously incredibly uh, gifted and talented folks, uh, mainly to serve as contrast. <laughs> now, now I'm just, I'm poking fun at myself because like what I geek out on, um, I, go, I geek out over what most people would prefer to avoid, which is marketing. And I hear the conversation everybody's talking about and like I want to get um, uh, in the peak of my fitness. And I, I have questions for Mark as well. I mean, I, I'm training, I'm running, I practice Muay Thai. I, I, I do a lot of things and I still, you know, I feel like there's still more, you know, to be had. But um, what, I, what I came to share with you today, I really boiled it down to three core things that every leader must have handled in their business when it comes to their marketing today. And... Um, you know, it's interesting because I always say that if you wanted me to speak for um, like three days, I would need like no preparation. But tell me seven minutes and I'm gonna it's going to take me a month to prepare. So I'll do my best here. Three core things awesome. every, every leader must have handled. Number one, the first thing is really to know what it actually is that they actually sell. I have this conversation a lot when clients call me and they say, well, listen, here's the thing that uh, we're working on and we have this 10-week program that does this and, or, or we have this kit that includes 12 DVDs, you know, 24 CDs, et cetera, et cetera, and this is what we want to sell. 
And the first thing I have to remind folks is nobody wants to pay a single penny for your CDs or your DVDs or any of your programs, um, figuratively speaking, because that's not actually what you're selling. The reminder in this first point is we're really focused on not the thing, but the result of the thing. And I always want everybody to run that filter when you think about, okay, what's the marketing message that uh, we're going to put out for this particular program or product? It's really all about what I call selling the destination and not the vehicle. So as example, if you were to, to sell me a trip to Hawaii, what are the things that you want me to actually be focused on if I want to make a decision to purchase this trip to Hawaii or this vacation? You want me to feel the, the, sand, the warm sand between my, my toes. You want me to, have the, to picture myself with that boat drink with the umbrella in it. You want me to feel the, the warm sun, the waves. You want me to hear the music. But what most companies do is typically in their marketing the equivalent of walking people through the trip through the airport where they have to say well the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get shaken down at TSA <laughs> then you're gonna stand in a huge line for hours upon hours with people that don't speak your language and then when you get on on board they're gonna lose your luggage and that is typically what people are, are putting out in their marketing messages, an equivalent to that. So key number one, core item number one, is really understanding that what you're actually selling is the destination or the result of whatever your product or service uh, brings to the purchaser and not the vehicle. They could care less if they needed to get to the hospital. They don't really care what color the ambulance is or what make or model the ambulance is. They just want to know, can I quickly get to the hospital? So that's core item number one. Mark, I'll just, just uh, that reminds me of that speech that Leonardo DiCaprio did in uh, Wolf of Wall Street when he was first selling penny stocks and he, the way he amped up the, the penny stock and what it was going to deliver to him. And when you're talking about Hawaii, I just have that image in my mind. So I totally get that. I totally get that. Awesome movie. And you know what, what's amazing to me is the, is the highest level of marketers that I meet, the most experienced folks, they're, we're all guilty at one point or another where we have to kind of stop ourselves and go, wait a minute, we're not saying the right thing. We're on the wrong path here. Let's stop, reset, zoom out. I always say zoom out. What is it that we're actually selling? What is the result that these folks are going to get? And it's not going to be, it has nothing to do with our program, but what is it that they actually want? So core item number two, I thought this was uh, appropriate because I actually just got done writing an article for um, the next issue of uh, the Dan Kennedy's uh, No BS letter. And I thought it was appropriate because uh, the, t the title of the article is, Does Your Digital Aura Attract or Repel? And I use this, I, the reason I'm even calling it a digital aura is because way back uh, on a cold, dark New Year's Eve in 1989, I personally experienced what some would call paranormal activity. I had taken a girlfriend to one of Chicago's New Year's Eve galas where the pre-dinner entertainment was actually a psychic entertainer. Now, when the psychic began her show, she stepped off the stage and literally floated across the giant ballroom floor as if she was like magnetically attracted to me. Now, mm -hmm. she began like dramatically waving her hands in front of my face and, and a, a, around my body and above my head. And she literally, uh, you know, that's when she screamed into the microphone. And I was like sitting back in, you know, in wonder. And she screamed, you, sir, have an aura that is glowing so strong it's reaching the ceiling and that is why I'm drawn to you huh. so I thought to myself well what the heck this lady must be crazy you, you know but with with paranormal and other spiritual practices uh, you know uh, an aura is believed to be an energy field that that all objects and living things have and it, it's thought that those energies are picked up by others and most visible to highly trained practitioners. But, hey, this is what I really thought. I thought, you know, I was young at the time. And personally, I believe that it was because I was wearing like this cocky James Bond style white 
tuxedo dinner jacket. I had a pompadour haircut, a Louis Vuitton man purse, and I was accompanied <laughs> by a stunning brunette. So that really made me an easy mark. <laughs> that's, yeah. what I, that's what I really thought it was. Yeah, you know, yeah, aura. That, that's the aura, okay? <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, I was glad to help her show. But I point this out because what happened to me in that room happens to everyone in real life and on the internet with their business. We, without a spoken word, she really literally thought she had me figured out, quote unquote, and that's when the battle of perceptions really began. So I call it the digital aura when you do this online, because and here's why it's important to you. According to uh, the, the analytics site Compete, 94% of buyers research online before making any buying decisions. Now, Forrester states that 57% of the buyer's decisions were already made before they contacted any supplier whatsoever, and that 67% of the buyer's journey is now done digitally. Okay, so that's what, what I consider a digital footprint. So if, if, this, if we know that these statistics are true, what people see and find out about you before you meet matters a lot because mm -hmm. you're not, no longer in control uh, when people are looking for you online. There's typically three phases that your potential buyer goes through when they're making a decision to purchase anything in any category. The first stage is discovery. Trying to, you know, they discover that they have a need. The second phase is research when they actually start looking, not necessarily for your company, but for solutions within your category. And then the third phase is deciding on the source. So your footprint online should really consist of content marketing that includes, you know, physical materials too, print materials, audio CDs, DVDs are all forms of content marketing. Now, when it comes to online part of your content marketing, your digital footprint has to be totally buttoned up and, and as deliberate as, as possible if you want your phone, you know, your phone to ring. Because your potential buyer now, think about it, is already shopping around. And the thing that you can control is what they find during their research. So the question that I pose to you for, for core, you know, item number three, Two is what does your business aura look like and what does its digital aura look like? So your competition's already beefing up their content and their inbound marketing. So when your prospect discovers their need for a solution, they begin their Google search. So a short list I want to give you quickly of some of the things that folks will find on you as they're searching for you and uh, some items that you can... Um, up level in beep, beefing up your digital aura. First and foremost, your Google places and reviews. Now, after all, these are the things that are being served first to local prospects. You'll notice in Google Maps, if you type in anything you're looking for in a local area, the city plus plumber, you're going to see all the local uh, uh, listings served up first along with their reviews. Next, online review sites listing your business. Review sites have high authority, just like Yelp. You'll notice they're always popping up on the front page of Google. By the way, that's a little side tip. If you want to uh, ramp up your search without using any SEO whatsoever, ramp up your reviews. Number three, your website. Uh, uh, best practice, your web, web design's got to have a look that matches the quality of your product or service, and it should be responsive design. Your blog or online newsletter, whether it's part of your website or not. It's a terrific nucleus for your content marketing and inbound strategy. Your Facebook page, your YouTube page, and your Twitter. Always make sure those pages look current and keep up your content. Now, there's one rule to abide by. Only set up a social property if you commit to updating it because nothing screams neglect like an abandoned profile. All right. Now, the third core item that uh, I want to bring up today is what is the action that you, you desire folks to take? Because you want to have a very clear cut call to action is what we call it in every uh, piece of material that you put out there. So you want to have a consistent, in, in some respect, you want to call it like a one doorway into your business. What's the one core offer that you want to make? Then you can hit 
you know, you, you hit the core desire, which is that one thing that your market absolutely, you know, the itch that they want to scratch. And then you can come back with what we call angles of approach. And I'm going to give you a couple examples of angles of approach. Um, we have a product, a software product called reputationcontroldashboard.com. Now, the one core desire that we've identified with our users is businesses want to take control of their online reputation. So that is a core desire. Take control of online reputation because it, you know, for for a long time now, people have felt that's out of our control. We, uh, we have a customer that's not happy; they can just scream online now. Uh, we have to be extra careful now because people, you know, people aren't happy; they're going to immediately com complain online. So people want control. So that's the core desire. Now, here's examples of angles of approach: follow up messages, and and they all kind of. They all hit the same, uh, a different angle for the same product because of the fact that each angle is going to incite and inspire action from different parts of the same list. So, for example, a, a percentage of the list will, appe will uh, appeal to the message of controlling their online reputation. Now, another appeal is getting more referrals and recommendations. There are going to be some folks, same product, it's, it happens to be another byproduct of that software is it helps you get more referrals and recommendations online. So you can have a message that, uh, that uses that as an, as an angle or an appeal. Another appeal could be the software helps you protect against that crazy customer or nasty competitor. Now there's a certain segment of that same list that already has been attacked, that has that pain in their side or that thorn in their foot. And that is the angle of approach that's been going to appeal to them. And one more example of an angle of approach. The software gives you better customer engagement and customer service. Actually get real-time feedback and honest feedback that you'd never get if you had an, uh, a human, believe it or not, call and ask for feedback. You'll get better feedback from a robot. Now these are all, you know, benefits and features, uh, benefits of the features from the software. But you see how each angle of approach actually is going to um, trigger a different part of the list according to what um, their particular pain is. So when you hit that core desire, follow-up messages can have the different angles of approach. You're going to incite and, and trigger action from different parts of the list. And that's how you go deeper. Um, in your interaction. So uh, that is my time. And I hope that I explained that well, Ramon. Um, let yeah, me know. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's, now to me that sounds super ninja, and, but I love it and I, I get the core message there is to really be being able to, you know, get to a deeper level of connecting with people and, and managing your message out there in the marketplace. And obviously this is all, you know, feedback that you get from the environment, from the marketplace, is a big contributor to how the team feels about how they're performing. So being able to manage that is obviously a great fuel for, for any team that you're operating. So th thank you very much, Mark. And just, just so you know, Mark is, the, Mark is the magic marketing man and his partner, Nat Jones, behind the uh, newmavericks.com website. And uh, I've really been impressed how these guys have put things together and created our digital aura. And it just keeps getting brighter and brighter every day in terms of their input. So thank you very much. So that pretty much wraps up everyone's contribution here. I'm just trying to see if we have any questions. If there's anyone's got any questions, uh, I know it's been pretty complete, so no one should have really any questions. But in case anyone does, um, Feel free to uh, sound them out or write them down in the uh, the chat box there. Mark, am, am I seeing everything there? I believe so. I think uh, I've got the question box open here. Um, okay. I'll question here. We we're getting a lot of love, which which we like to see. David Williams rocked. You guys were amazing. Thank you. Uh, we yeah we appreciate it. It's it's our our pleasure. If I can speak for. Uh, yeah, yeah. myself and others. <laughs> I, I know, Ramon, you, uh, you uh, were absolutely brilliant putting this together, and um, it's an honor working with you and, and watching you work. Fantastic. 
Thank, thanks. And uh, anyone else got any comments here? Uh, Mark, you wanted to, if you've got any offers that you want to put out there, calls to actions that people can connect with you, uh, feel free to share them out there now. Yeah, no, uh, firstly just to reiterate Mark and David's words and Emily's and Michael's, uh, I think it was a great call and thanks to you Ramon for, for bringing it all together. Um, I just had a thought that uh, we always like to um, leave people with something to go away with because it is a lot to digest. So um, yeah, I'd be very happy to offer a uh, an ebook uh, copy of my book, Ancient Wisdom for Modern Health, which just goes into a lot more detail about all the stuff I've spoken about as well as a lot more information on the natural cycles um, of health and well-being, emotional health, um, all about the earthing and the sun and basically all the forgotten wisdoms of health and well-being. You know, people get so overwhelmed these days with um, what I call the modern fad view of health and well-being that every week there's a new fad about, you know, you've got to eat this or you've got to exercise like this and people just, just get overwhelmed and confused. So the book's really about just simplifying health and the real core core things that you can do very easily that will really transform your health and well-being without taking too much time and getting back to the way uh, nature organized it for, uh, for business success. I'd be very happy to, to offer that to anyone in an e-book or an audio book version and if anyone would like that they can just uh, email uh, info, info at markbun.com.au and uh, we'll be happy to uh, send you all the links out for any uh, any of those downloads. So, But uh, thanks again Ramon, thanks to all the other panelists, I think it's been fantastic and if there's any way we can help uh, going forward then uh, very happy to. Thank you very much Mark, appreciate all your good energy and input here. And so everyone going forward, this was like a, a bit of a sampling taste of some of the insights, game-changing insights we'll be giving. And we're looking to have this once a month, so the next webinar you'll be notified about. And uh, we'll go in more deeply into some specific area. And I uh, look forward to sharing all those insights with you. Hey, Ramon, so really quickly, we, there's a, yeah. a question that I think is very important. This is a really great question. Okay. Um, one of our attendees asked, what is the purpose of these experts to come together? Mutual support, question mark, shared marketing, forming a cohesive team, education. Do you want to address that, Ramon? Sure. Uh, it's all of those things, but more importantly, it's saying that life is not just one part. It's an integration of a lot of parts into a greater wholeness. And that if we don't want anyone, any leader, really, if they have weaknesses, they at least want to have someone to be able to mitigate those weaknesses so they don't have to suffer from them. You know, we're not here to suffer on this planet or, or in leadership roles. So the idea is that we want to make leaders more indomitable or more invincible on every layer so they don't have to suffer from being a leader. So I hope that answers the question. Fantastic. Super. So that's a wrap, everyone. Thanks so much again, and we'll look forward to uh, connecting at future dates. Ramon? Yeah. Oh, Dave here. Michael. I'm, 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 Dave. We're trying to cl close up, but I've got to give a, a giveaway if you want more. To give sure, away. go ahead. Yeah, please. Anyone can come and get a, a sampling of the seven non-negotiables at www.fishbowlinventory, fishbowl as in putting fish, inventory.com forward slash VIP forward slash. Okay. Thank you, David. And uh, Michael, do you want to mention anything about future development? Yeah, just that uh, I've been working with Ramon, helping put this together, and we're really looking for really zeroing in on this whole concept of integration. We really realize that this is kind of really, to be a new maverick is really synonymous with what it's like to be an integrated leader. How do you create an integrated leader? How do you live from the inside out as an integrated leader? And it's not just leading others, it's starting with leading yourself. So look for us with more coming out in this, on the website at newmavericks.com on what integration really means, what does it translate into, how do you put it together. We're really excited about kind of putting that, it's a model, it's a metaphor, and it's the real thing. So if that excites you and turn, turns you on about what it's like to put it all together, keep looking, keep your eye out for newmavericks.com. You'll be hearing more announcements on that. Super. All right. Any, anyone else has some last words? 
Otherwise, we'll let everyone enjoy their evenings. Okay, that's a wrap, everyone. Thank you so much again, and look forward to uh, convening and uh, talking more. Thanks, everybody. It was a pleasure working with you. Have a good night. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.